The Chinese New Year is all about good fortune and an auspicious new beginning. But George Soros sent Xi Jinping an inauspicious message by speaking out against him on Chinese New Year's Eve. Soros predicted, contrary to popular belief, that Xi Jinping may not get a third term in the fall at the CCP's 20th National Congress. Why is Soros so against Xi Jinping and does his prediction carry any weight? Hello, welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lei. At the Hoover Institute's online event on January 31st, George Soros delivered a 23-minute pre-recorded speech trying to convince the world why Xi Jinping must go. The speech is similar to his three articles in 2021 calling Xi Jinping the most dangerous enemy of open societies. He said the Chinese real estate crisis, the pandemic, declining birth rate, and Xi's many political enemies will cost Xi his carefully orchestrated third term at the party's Congress this fall. Soros said that replacing Xi with someone less repressive would remove the greatest threat that open societies face today. Chinese commentators based outside of China generally attributed Soros' speech to his close relations with the faction of Jian Zemin, Xi Jinping's political enemy. And everyone is aware that the two sides are engaged in an all-out power struggle. Watching Soros' video, I felt that the 91-year-old, who could barely read his script, was making a last-ditch effort to help the anti-Xi forces. I've already made two videos on the animosity between Xi and Soros, including his alleged role in the 2015 financial coup orchestrated by the Jiang Zemin faction against Xi. I'll provide the links at the bottom, you can take a look. But the problem is, Soros isn't alone in his view on China. His comments are representative of the view shared by some of the U.S. business, political, and media elites. On January 28, 2021, a week after Biden took office, an anonymous former U.S. senior diplomat wrote a 20,000-word article titled The Longer Telegram Toward a New American-China Strategy which suggests that the United States should partner with anti-Xi forces within the CCP to overthrow him so that Sino-U.S. relations can return to pre-Xi Jinping era. This group believes that by having China return to Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms and opening up, the CCP will become acceptable again and can coexist with the West. They see Xi as the guy who stands in their way. Soros said, in contrast to Deng Xiaoping, Xi Jinping is a true believer in communism. Mao Zedong and Vladimir Lenin are his idols. But is that claim valid? Is the world better off if Xi Jinping is replaced by someone from Jiang Zemin's faction? There are several misconceptions we need to clarify. First of all, the belief that Deng Xiaoping was a benign leader is far from being true. Deng Xiaoping personally carried out many of Mao's deadly policies and stood by Mao during his unpopular years. Mao ordered lethal political campaigns against his enemies, and Deng ordered a military crackdown on the peaceful student protesters. While Deng Xiaoping allowed economic reforms, he refused political reforms. During his time and the time of his two chosen successors, Jiang Zemin and Hu Jintao, Human rights conditions in China continue to deteriorate, including the Tiananmen Square massacre, the persecution of the Tibetans, and the persecution of Falun Gong, and so on. Secondly, the difference between Xi Jinping and Deng Xiaoping isn't ideological. When Deng came to power, he was challenged by a collapsing economy. To help the CCP survive, Deng had no choice but to open China up economically. By the time Xi Jinping came to power, he had inherited the problems of decades of economic reforms without political reforms, corruption and capital flight. Government officials, business people, and private citizens grabbed money by whatever means and rushed to send their assets and children overseas. She steered China away from Deng's policies and moved to the left to prevent the Communist Party from collapsing. Deng and Xi's policies both aimed to save the CCP and were just measures of self-help. They were born out of the necessity for the party to survive and weren't ideologically different at all. 
It doesn't matter whether Deng Xiaoping or Xi Jinping believed in communism. Neither of them may believe in it, but that didn't prevent them from using communism to maintain their rule. In today's China, if you ask CCP members in private if they believe in communism, very few will say that they do. They join the party just to get ahead. In Soros' speech, he mentioned Deng Xiaoping's famous policy called hide our strength and bide our time. For decades, Deng Xiaoping's stay low profile policy allowed the CCP to grow into the second largest economy globally, infiltrate the world, and engage in massive industrial espionage without the West paying attention. If you call Xi Jinping a true believer in communism, then Deng Xiaoping was a true believer in communism who dressed up as a capitalist wannabe. Let me ask you, which one is more harmful to the West? Which one do you prefer? I'm not saying that I'm in favor of one over the other. I'm just illustrating a point that the West often ignores. That is, in communist China, the party is bigger than the country. The party has established an elaborate system that controls the people, rewards them if they follow, and punishes them if they don't. If you don't get rid of this system, but replace Xi Jinping with someone else, the new guy may turn out to be the same because the system will make him do the same thing. The nature of the CCP and its system doesn't tolerate real reforms, doesn't tolerate capitalists. It needs capital to gain power. Once this is accomplished, it will take off the capitalist cape and show the ambition to rule the world. Communists do not want to coexist with the free world. It wants to take over the world. This is stated in the last sentence in the Communist Manifesto. So why do some people want to go back to Deng Xiaoping's time? Money. If George Soros didn't have money, he'd be powerless. His power comes from money. The same is true for the Wall Street people. They like Deng Xiaoping and the Jiang Zemin faction because those factions love money too. On that platform, they are a perfect match. Xi Jinping, however, isn't a money man. He's skeptical about Western capitalists. He believes that money has corrupted the CCP from within. So will Xi Jinping survive the attack from his political enemies inside and outside China joining forces? The battle is on and it's too early to tell. But I must say that no one within the CCP is as alert as Xi in preparing for the battle because he sees the CCP's pending demise. As early as June 24, 2019, at a Politburo meeting, she told the attendees that dangers that could shake the party's foundation are everywhere. He warned them that small problems can become big ones and a small pipe surge will cause a collapse. Four years ago, on January 5, 2018, at the opening ceremony of a training session for new members of the CCP's Central Committee at the Central Party School, Xi Jinping said this about the demise of the CCP. Our party has more than 89 million members and more than 4.5 million grassroots organizations. In my view, the only one who can bring us down is ourselves. There's no second person. So Xi will continue to use his anti-corruption campaign to root out his opponents. Chinese legal expert Yuan Hongbin believes that Xi has a better chance of beating his opponents because he controls more than 12,000 secret police who exclusively belong to the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection and the Supervisory Commission. This force monitors and arrests CCP officials above the prefecture level. When combined with the high-tech surveillance tools, Yuan believes that Xi's faction so far has the upper hand in the power struggle. How about learning some more Chinese? Let's talk about the Chinese word for country, which is guojia. It's made up of two characters. Guo means nation or country. Jia means families. So a nation is made up of the country's families. We should remind our politicians that they shouldn't forget about taking care of the people's families. That's the backbone of a nation. Here's the video on Soros and Xi Jinping, and the other one explains why Xi Jinping wants to move away from Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms. 
That's all for today. So long.